Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. Now, one of the big stories coming out over the last week or so, <laughs> in addition to the a million amazing pro wrestling stories coming out in the last couple of weeks, is of course the departure of Bray Wyatt from WWE. On Saturday last week, WWE announced that they had come to the terms of the release of the former Universal Champion. But in addition to that, it was announced yesterday, or at least it was reported yesterday, that the Nature Boy Ric Flair, former WWE Champion, two-time Hall of Famer, Ric Flair, one of the greatest wrestlers in some people's eyes, the greatest pro wrestler of all time. He had also left WWE. He had requested his release and it was granted. Now, as I was setting up for this video, WWE has since confirmed this on their website, their social media platforms. They have confirmed that indeed Ric Flair has been released. Now, the Ric Flair story is very interesting when it comes to the official announcement of his release today because WWE usually have a certain pattern in how they announce releases. For instance, when it came to Bray Wyatt last week, it was the tra traditional WWE has come to the terms of the release of Bray Wyatt. We wish him all the best in his future endeavors. That's the usual classic way that WWE tends to announce the releases or departures of wrestlers from the company. But with Ric Flair, it was slightly different today because it's a very, very very, very short statement where it simply says, quote, we have come to the return. <laughs> we have come to the terms on the release of Ric Flair as of today, uh, a August 3rd, 2021. That's it. No, we wish you the best in your future endeavors. No, blah, blah, blah. They have literally just said we have come to the terms on the release of Ric Flair as of today. Done. So obviously, one could speculate there, and I don't think it's a massive reach to say that there's been some kind of falling out involving Ric Flair and the WWE. The story came out yesterday, of course, that Ric Flair, I think it was Fightful Select announced it, they reported it, that Ric Flair wasn't happy with some of the booking decisions and what was going on in WWE recently. Now, they didn't say whether that pertained to himself or whether that pertained to Charlotte Flair, whether that pertained to anyone in, in particular. It did note that Ric Flair was very vocal that he didn't like the the storyline he was involved in earlier this year when it came to Lacey Evans, that of course was next due to Lacey Evans legitimately getting pregnant. It was going to lead to a match rumored for WrestleMania that would involve Flair in the corner of Lacey Evans going up against Charlotte Flair. Of course, that didn't happen because of Lacey Evans' pregnancy, but Ric Flair reportedly wasn't happy with that and reportedly wasn't happy with a lot of things. He brought those concerns or voiced those concerns to the WWE chairman and CEO himself, Vince McMahon, and Flair requested his release. He was given it. Now, what we are going to talk about today when it comes to Flair, when it comes to Wyatt, is what's next. Because that's what people like to talk about. People like to, when people have been released from the company, of course, it's a good period of time to reflect on their contributions to the WWE or to any company they were involved in. But in pro wrestling, the, the big thing is what's next. What's next for a certain talent? Where are they going to go next? What options do they have available to them? Uh, who are they going to sign with? Are we going to see them on a certain programming? Are we even going to ever see them in pro wrestling again? It's always interesting to talk about it. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about what's next for both Bray Wyatt and Ric Flair, two of the you know, two massive names associated with WWE. Certainly when it comes to Bray Wyatt in modern history, when it comes to Ric Flair, just in pro wrestling history in general, what is next for both of these uh, former WWE stars? Let's start off talking about Bray Wyatt. Of course, former Universal Champion, former three-time World Champion overall, former WWE Champion, two-time Universal Champion, even if his Universal Championship reign last year lasted for only seven days after he won it a second time for Braun Strowman at SummerSlam 2020. Of course, this is a surprising one. And there have been lots of stories that are coming out about Bray Wyatt. Um, not necessarily any particular reason as to why he's released. The, the, the thing that's only been reported is budget cuts. That's what they keep saying. Well, budget cuts, which is such a it's not you, it's me excuse of, well, you know, budget cuts and that kind of stuff. And it's so, so BS. It's so BS because... WWE can can cite budget cuts. They can say it's due to budget cuts. They can say all of these things. In reality, there's no budget that's being cut there. It's just a case of Tony uh, Tony Khan of Nick Khan. <laughs> talking about Tony Khan of Nick Khan and and Vince McMahon. They just they're desperate for money. They're desperate for money, and no longer are they looking at these these wrestlers and these talents as people and as individuals. They are looking at them as dollar signs. Now, it's surprising because one would argue that Bray Wyatt made a lot of money for WWE, and he did. He made a ton of money for the company when it comes to merchandising, when it comes to T-shirts, action figures, masks, gloves, custom title bouts, 
Bray Wyatt was such a unique character because you've got two sides of it. You've got two characters in one. You've got the Darker Fiend character, which is like a cosplayer Halloween dream and all of the merchandise, the masks and everything that goes with that. And on the Bray Wyatt side of things, the Firefly Funhouse character, again, it's still a marketer's dream. You've got the puppets, you've got the Funhouse. You could do so much with that. So it was really surprising from WWE's merchandising and licensing point of view why they would release such a cash cow like Bray Wyatt. Yes, he hasn't been on television recently, but there were plans for him to return this month he was going to be part of a major program going into SummerSlam. we don't know who that program was going to be against or what his matches were going to be so it feels just so odd that WWE would release someone that's made them so much money in the past nevertheless he is now gone and i know there, there are some people online that are saying that oh, WWE will realize they've made a mistake and they'll try and bring him back like they did with samoa joe and there might be a situation like that there was a, a report wasn't there was it last week the week before that saying that WWE was interested in bringing back braun Strowman in a similar sort of sense of seeing the momentum that AEW has had with recent signings like malachi black cm punk brian danielson there was a feeling that maybe w was looking at that going we need to bring someone back we need to make a signing as opposed to cutting all of these people one of them is braun Strowman. For me, Bray Wyatt is a far bigger star than Braun Strowman ever was and ever will be, to be honest with you. So if they're going to release Bray Wyatt, I, I'd be very surprised that they would bring back Braun Strowman. So if, if WWE did at some point in a couple of months' time make an offer to Bray Wyatt to bring him back... I can't get into Bray Wyatt's mind, obviously, so I don't know. If it was me, and that's all I can really say, if it was me, and it's the same when it comes to Braun Strowman, when it comes to Bray Wyatt, or any of the people that was released by WWE over the course of the last 18 months or so, my reaction would be the same, irrespective of who I was. You decided to fire me, and in the case of someone like Braun Strowman or Bray Wyatt, you cited budget cuts, which says you don't think I'm worth the contract that I had. Me and you have different valuations in terms of what I'm worth. My contract says I'm worth this much. You didn't believe I was worth that much anymore. Not that you can't pay it because I know you can pay it because you're telling all of your investors, all of your shareholders, all of your stockholders about how much money you're making, about how, how record profits you're making. And these billion dollar contracts you've got with NBC Universal, with Fox, with with four peacock with the saudi deal as well all of this money you have you can't tell me you can't afford to pay my contract because i know you can when you're telling me budget cuts you're saying to me your contract is too big for what we value to be whatever contract you're whatever money you're making we think that's not that's too much we think that's that's wrong and WWE might release these talents to maybe renegotiate and maybe they can come back. If that was me, I know it's business and I don't like to hold a grudge and I don't like to be bitter and I don't like to be this and I don't like to be, to be that. But if I got a phone call from WWE who run me over and said, hey, want to come back? It's going to be over for less money. I would say, screw you. See you later. Bang. Because why treat people like that? And WWE has this perception of there's other people. It's just a production line. More people will come in. We can create more characters. We can do whatever for less money. So I don't see Bray Wyatt going back um, unless WWE made him an offer that he couldn't refuse and it was more money. Then if that's Bray Wyatt, go back. So yeah, screw them. So obviously there are plenty of options available for Bray Wyatt. He will not struggle for work. There is no doubt in my mind whatsoever he will not struggle at all for employment. Every single pro wrestling company around will want Bray Wyatt in their organization. So therefore you have to go through every <laughs> pro wrestling company. But we've got the major players here. We'll start with AEW. I think AEW is is the most likely destination. I mean, spoiler, as I think it is for both of these names here that we're talking about today. The reason I say that is because, look, obviously finances play a part of it. Obviously finances are going to play a part of it. Bray Wyatt, again, he's a former three-time world champion. He was a prominent figure. This time last year, he was one of the main players on SmackDown. Again, this time last year, he won the Universal Championship at SummerSlam. Heading into 2020, he was the Universal Champion. He was a major player. He was a major character. And he makes a lot of money because of his characters. Now, wherever he goes, it must be stated, I don't think The Fiend shows up. Um, is it a version of The Fiend? Will Bray Wyatt have a different mask? Will he have a different character? Or will he go something completely different? The Bray Wyatt's post-WWE career is going to be fascinating because of that. Is he going to reinvent himself for the third time? Time, or is he going to stick with what he's doing right now? I don't know if he necessarily will. I don't know if the Firefly Funhouse version of Bray Wyatt will see again. Obviously, that version of The Fiend we won't see again either. I think we will see something different. It just depends how far he, he, he rears off, or veers off rather, the, the Fiend direction of the character. That's going to be the most interesting thing, I think, going forward. But AEW, I think, is the most likely destination for him because of finances, because of creativity. And again, I know so many people 
I say so many people, but you just you see it on social media of and, and it happens. You know, it happened with Bray Wyatt getting released, it happened with Ric Flair getting released. People go, well, he's going to AEW, he's going to AEW, and that used to happen back in the day. That he's going to TNA, he's going to TNA, or he's going to WCW, he's going to WCW. Look, it, it happens. But the reason names like Bray Wyatt or, or Flair to a lesser extent, but certainly Bray Wyatt, the reason why people like that get associated with AEW is because they're game changers. They are, they are massive assets. They are, again, they were featured part of WWE programming and they're good in the ring, they're incredibly creative, Bray Wyatt is a very, very unique pro wrestler, very unique, and AEW would be glad to have it, and I'm sure, sure, considering Bray Wyatt also has friends within that company, I'm sure he has people already pulling for him within the company, I'm sure maybe informally, maybe even AEW have reached out to him, so I think AEW is the most likely destination for him. Now, obviously, we cover a lot of Impact Wrestling here on the channel, so could Bray Wyatt show up in Impact Wrestling? I, I, I just, I don't know if I see that. I, I just really don't know if I see that. And I, again, I'm someone who's a fan of Impact, and I'm uh, someone that said that maybe, you know, Impact would maybe be a destination for someone like a Braun Strowman. You could possibly see that happening. And look, Impact Wrestling does have people like Jay White there from New Japan. It does have people like Kenny Omega there from AEW. Who's to say a name like Bray White wouldn't come in? For a one-shot deal, I, I wouldn't rule that out. For a one-shot deal or for one match, you can't rule anything out like that because at the end of the day, they're independent contractors, and if the offer is good enough, then you can't rule those kind of things out. But as a permanent per member of the roster, I, I don't know if I could see that. I mean, maybe a situation whereby, you know, he works for Impact, but he also works for every other company. That's a possibility as well. But look, Bray Wyatt's very protective of his character as well. I think he's very aware of not being someone that would be overexposed. I'm not sure necessarily he would want to be this guy that's appearing on all of these different programs. I think that AEW would be a realistic destination for him. I think he would be interested in doing stuff in Japan as well. Because, uh, again, this depends on the current climate over there as well. It must be said when it comes to the pandemic. Of course, they're still in a state of emergency, and the Olympics is going on over there right now. So travel is not impossible, but it's difficult still back and forth from Japan, especially on a regular basis. But you can see a character like The Fiend would make so much money, so much money in Japan because they live for that kind of stuff. Not just like a, it's not like a, an invading member from the United States. It's the, it's characters. Sometimes, you know, Jap Japanese wrestling is sometimes based on realism and hard hitting and strong style. But sometimes when you inject a bit of character, a bit of supernatural element to it, they can just go crazy for that kind of stuff. And Bray Wyatt, the fiend gimmick is such a, dark and you know, horrifying look and horrifying character i mean even now still i see with the character today and when you see those high-res images of him or high-res uh, bits of footage of that character it's such a great mask and it's such a great look and such a great and unique gimmick it looks nothing like bray wyatt as well uh, when he's outside of it it's it's so encapsulating and all-consuming that if he brought a character like that to new japan and he certainly could have a situation whereby he has almost three separate characters now he could go to AEW, have a the version of Bray Wyatt you see there have a darker version. He might have a completely separate monstrous character that he only brings out in New Japan. That's worth considering as well. So there's lots of different options available to him. As far as Impact, I, again, a one-off maybe. Ring of Honor and the NWA, I, do, I just really don't know if I see that. Again, this is a big, big guy in terms of popularity and exposure. And everyone would want him. And it's going to be, you know, the WWE obviously didn't think he was worth the money. But a lot of other companies will. If I had to pick three companies that are the most likely, it would be AEW, New Japan, and Impact. Whether that would be him being on an AEW deal and having the option to work for New Japan and Impact, I think maybe that's the most likely. If I had to pick one company, it would be AEW. I just I think it's a matter of time. Now, his contract, his non-compete clause, which is 90 days, it's not a Malachi Black situation. His contract, his 90-day non-compete clause expires the week before full gear in November. I think it's very likely he appears then. Um... And it, I'm just fascinated. I've always been fascinated with Bray Wyatt. I've always been fascinated with how he constructs gimmicks and how he comes up with stuff. Um, I, I, I would be interested to see if this is mainly himself in terms of the, the, the next character he creates, what that looks like. It's because there have been criticisms of Bray Wyatt in WWE in terms, of, especially with the Fiend stuff, you know, the red lights and certainly some of the promos and some of the vignettes have been quite repetitive and a little bit lacking in logic and again the red light stuff and the matches especially with the fiend weren't that great because when you build up a character that that's that's that dominating and that strong 
it's very difficult to sell. It's very difficult to sell in a mask anyway, but it's very difficult to to make it seem like the Fiend is ever in trouble. He dominates matches. But at the end of the day, he's not a giant guy like a Brock Lesnar or a whoever that physically looks like he's going to dominate you. So his dominance has to come from his his facial reactions, his his sort of scariness, his that feeling of horror and dread, the psychological side of things, it's a difficult gimmick to make work sometimes. And WWE, ultimately, they failed with it. That's why he's no longer with the company. So it's going to be interesting to see if that was Bray Wyatt if, or if that was WWE or if that was a hybrid of both. Because if he brings a monstrous character to AEW and we're still having these same issues with logic or matches or pacing or all that kind of stuff, then you'll say, wow, a lot of that's on Bray Wyatt then because he's the common denominator. There's lots of stuff like that that's fascinating about Bray Wyatt in this post-WWE career. I'm absolutely fascinated to see what he brings to the table. I'm sure he's already got ideas that he's considering. Again, most likely destination for me, and look, I'm, I'm just a guy here on YouTube that's talking to you through a, a camera and a microphone, but I, I would think that AEW is the most likely destination. And again, I know people will say, well, WWE guys, WWE guys, but when people like Bray Wyatt come available, you snap them up because they don't become available every single day. And that's just it. Now let's switch over to Ric Flair. Again, this was just officially confirmed by WWE at the time of recording only a few minutes ago. Obviously, there's been some kind of falling out. Flair wasn't happy with booking and WWE they are, they can and have been, and they are to this day still a very petty company. And that's why they haven't wished him the best in his future endeavors. As to where he goes next, look, there is a possibility that Ric Flair doesn't show up in any pro wrestling company. He, he will, he will make odd appearances, but I, what I mean in, is in terms of signing a contract. He might not sign a contract with any pro wrestling company again. He might just make one-off appearances for AEW, for Impact, for the NWA, for Ring of Honor. He might just do that. Now, people are going to say AEW, and I mentioned it on Twitter yesterday, and I think a lot of people reacted fairly positively to this in that if Flair, and I don't know how much AEW Flair's watched, to be honest with you. He's done some interviews where it kind of implies that he hasn't been watching it that much, and I know that he, he's on shaky terms with Iron Anderson. He mentioned that he hasn't really spoken to Iron Anderson in a long time, and they had a bit of a falling out, and I think that stems from Ric Flair's health issues he had a few years ago, and reportedly Iron Anderson didn't visit him or didn't reach out or whatever, and they had a bit of a falling out because of that. That doesn't affect business. Flair, that doesn't stop Flair coming into AEW because at the end of the day, Tony Khan's bringing in CM Punk who's got issues with Colt Cabana. If there's money to be made, it's business at the end of the day. And I mentioned that I think AEW is the likely landing point for Flair because, again, I don't know if Flair has watched a lot of AEW, but even if he hasn't, he must realize and he must see that you know, Flair obviously thinks he's still got something to contribute. Flair still thinks, obviously, look, I can't wrestle anymore. He would if he could, but he thinks I can't wrestle anymore. But I can still be part of the show, and I want to be part of the show. And I'm Ric Flair, damn it. I can still contribute. And he must look at AEW and see, wait a minute. Arn Anson's on television every single week. Tully Blanchard's on television every single week. Sting's on television every single week. Jake Roberts is on television every single week, managing young talent, helping younger talent, or just, or just less established talents, get over and being part of the presentation. He must see that and think, I'm Ric Flair. Of course I could do something like that. Why wouldn't I be able to do something like that? And there are certainly names on the AEW roster. The biggest one for me is MJF, who you would go, he doesn't need a mouthpiece. But then people like Cody Rhodes don't need a mouthpiece. People like Darby Allen don't need a mouthpiece. It's just having them be part of the presentation. And you look at someone like MJF who doesn't need a mouthpiece. Of course he doesn't. But in the same vein that when CM Punk had Paul Heyman, he didn't need a mouthpiece. A lot of people don't need a mouthpiece. Just having someone there gives them credibility. Having Ric Flair with MJF, of course, would give him extra credibility. And I just think it's inevitable. AEW, they're not a derivative of WCW, but they like to play into that history. They like to play into the history that they're on TNT. They're going to be on TBS next year when Dynamite and Rampage moves to TBS. They've got that history there. That's why they've brought in the likes of Sting, of Arn Anson, of Tully Blanchard, of Eric Bischoff of Juventud Guerrero this week because they like to play into that history of the pro wrestling that was on TBS and TNT back in the day with WCW and Jim Crockett promotions, etc. They like to play on that. And who is more widely associated of than with WCW than a name like a Ric Flair or Jim Crockett promotions of wrestling on TNT and TBS? That's Ric Flair. That is Ric Flair. People can associate Flair with WWE, but in reality, his career is based in the NWA, Jim Crockett promotions, WCW. So it would be a homecoming of sorts and it, it would feel right. It would feel right. So I see him, if he's going to sign a contract anywhere, I see him signing that deal 
with AEW. Now, can we rule out other appearances in other promotions? Of course we can't. Flair was in Impact back in the day. It didn't end the best for him, but it's a different regime. So I'm sure they would like to have Flair make an appearance, and I wouldn't rule that out either. Of course, the NWA is a different platform than it used to be. It's owned by Billy Corgan. I think Billy Corgan does have a, a reasonable relationship with, with Ric Flair, and I'm sure they would love to have Ric Flair come in at an NWA power taping, have him inside the studio at GPB Studios there in Atlanta. They like to play up into that history as well. Flair is one of the greatest NWA World Heavyweights champions of all time. He's one of the names that's widely associated with that championship. So, of course, of course, they would want him to make an appearance, and I wouldn't rule that out either. As far as Ring of Honor, Flair did a couple of shots of them. That ended very badly back in the mid-2000s. So I don't know about that. But in terms of odd, you know, one-off odd appearances, Impact and NWA can't be ruled out. In terms of a full-time, be on television every single week as a manager, not necessarily a mouthpiece, but a manager... I think it's a no-brainer for Flair to come into AEW. And again, I know people will say, well, wow, look, all these people they're bringing in and they're not letting people go and Brian Danielson and CM Punk and, and Bray Wyatt and Ric Flair. I know people are going to say that and it's a valid criticism. It's a mistake that Impact and WCW made back in the day. But these are big names and these are names that you can't turn down. They have name recognition. Having Ric Flair does add credibility, even at this point in his life and his age. And I don't think anyone's against having Flair on television every single week as far as, as long as you use him properly. AEW's track record of using these legends is very, very good. Very good. Again, look at how they've used Tully Blanchard, Sting, Arn Anderson, Jake Roberts. They're not focal points. They're not stealing the spotlight from their talent. They're enhancing their talent. They're giving their talent, the person they're managing, credibility. I think Ric Flair would do that as well. So I think Flair and Wyatt both end up going to AEW in terms of signing full-time contracts. But in the, in the name of Flair, I, I wouldn't rule out an appearance in the NWA or an Impact. When it comes to Wyatt, certainly wouldn't rule out appearances in Japan as well. So that's where I think both of those guys end up. But look, guys. As always, this is just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on where Bray Wyatt and Ric Flair will end up in their post-WWE careers? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll do my best to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys in the comment section below. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button too. It really does help us out here on YouTube. Go out the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestling News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or have you come across this video today. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.